All right, let's look at the wing T down play. And this is a bread and butter whenever we install our wing T set. Uh, I love the play. And I was watching the Army Temple game this weekend. And lo and behold, you know, Army is a uh, kind of a flex bone, outside veer type offense, but they always mix in some different concepts. And they ran a uh, just a great downplay. And here we're looking at the great, great view of them. You can kind of see their line splits, how far their linemen are off the line of scrimmage. Um, pretty even splits across the board. This wingback is split maybe a little further than you might do off your tight end, but it's, it's close enough. If we think about our rules for down, we're going to see uh, a down block from the I'm sorry, down block from the play side tackle and tight end. And we're going to then see um, probably a reach to the right for this uh, center and a reach to the right for the left guard. And in some cases, you might have them go right to the next level, but I still want to make that reach step and at least cut off the path of a fast penetrating lineman or, or a linebacker. This wing up here. His job is to get down, not on the defensive end here, but on the first linebacker that he sees inside, and that's probably going to be number two here. Um, we want to trap or kick out this defensive end here. He's an outside shade on that tight end, so we're going to see a block down. So let's watch a little bit and see what happens here. Okay. Over here we see the backside guard kind of missed his block um, didn't probably didn't step flat enough you know we can kind of back up a little bit it's a ways to go it's a tough block but he probably should have stayed on his feet a little longer and gotten his helmet across that defensive lineman attacked the quarterback if he'd gone out to the fullback this is not a good play um, great kick out by the guard here look at that right shoulder so it's a right step right shoulder helmets in a great position and he's just driving him laterally He's not trying to push him downfield. He's just taking him straight laterally. And then if you watch this wingbacks block here, he ends up getting the middle backer who is scraping across to this backer or safety here, ended up blitzing and getting caught in all that garbage there. So as he comes through, great block by the backer. I would, I'd prefer to see that be a left shoulder block. But hey, he gets a body on him more than enough to get in the in the end zone. I had another coach send me some film. This is from a uh, beautiful kind of central Pennsylvania, maybe north central Pennsylvania, and a, a team that's pretty small school. Uh, you can kind of tell because look at their tight end looks like, you know, one of my eighth grade players. And, you know, the same rules here. We're going to see block down, block down, and let's kind of advance here a little bit. So one thing out of the gate, look at the tight end, and this is something to look for. It's the same kind of thing you might look at for a fullback or a wide receiver. He's taking a false step for his first step. Instead of pushing off of his, his left foot and getting a good power quick step with his right foot, he's stepping back, and he was slow to get off to start with, so he's already at a disadvantage and almost gets ear -holed by his own guard. He gets on his guy, he's pretty sticky, but boy, he bounces off him with his hands and then stops and he tries to stay with it. But I, I want to see lower pad level, especially for a guy that size, and getting kind of that hands into the shoulder contact. The guard coming through really didn't have anybody kick out because this, this, this backer here played out so wide. Um, and it's a pretty good fullback. So that's a good play right there. But again, the key work I would look at right there would be that, that tight end tackle kind of blew his block. He didn't get his helmet across. If you look at this guy here, that's where we want to use that gap technique. And it's so important for a tackle having to get more than a gap down to help out that center. We really want to see that head get across, and that center probably needs to do a better job there as well. They both kind of whiffed on him. All right, now let's look at 
This is my team at a jamboree uh, about a week and a half ago. And we we did down, we ran okay with down, not great. Um, I'm not going to review the rules. Let's just watch for a little bit here. Again, see the false step with that wing back? Stepped back. We want to get those feet moving forward because he needs to get, he needs to get on that, um, that backer quickly. And unfortunately, he gets caught up, um, should have taken a tighter angle in this case, goes around the kick out and then misses his block and that's the guy that makes the tackle. So I'm convinced if we look back here, if he takes a faster path and he can even run inside that defensive end we're going to trap if that's where he needs to go, but he needs to get a better angle of attack on that backer. And if he turns that backer in with a good backer block, that fullback's got a pretty good running lane right there. But alas, no. Um, I'm pretty impressed with the backside guard right here who made a good effort to reach and jump through and get to that backer. He didn't make a great play, but this is a new thing we're doing. Actually, that's a pretty good play. He got him pretty walled off. So if we get that backer block from the, the wing back, that's probably a pretty good play. So again, just a few clips. Uh, one of our favorite plays, the down play. It sets up a lot of other things we do, including down sweep. Um, we run a power play where we will take the halfback and run him through following the fullback. And then, of course, we have our counter crisscross off of that. See you next time, coaches.